Hello guys, welcome back to Beyond the Realms, and today we are joined once again with Crazy J. Here we are, via Skype. Hopefully you can hear it and see it well enough. And today we're going to be talking about a film that is, wow. <laughs> it, it's seriously one of the most mindfuck films I've ever seen or experienced in my life. I think, wouldn't you agree with that? It's, it's an adventure. Yes, it is Alejandro Jordorowski's The Holy Mountain, which, um, you know, is, I guess, you know, from a mainstream perspective, pretty damn obscure, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, I'd say so. Um, and it comes out of this box set, the films of Alejandro Jordorowski, which I've had for quite a while, um, which is pretty awesome because it comes with El Topo, which... That's the first of these films that I watched, that, and, and I loved it. Um, and then it comes with La Cravite and Fendo Yalis, I think it is. But also the soundtrack for El Topo and Holy Mountain is included in this. So it's a really awesome box set. I just blind bought this off of some recommendations. Like I said, El Topo is the one I had only seen out of this box set until recently. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, Holy Mountain, holy shit is all I can say. Um, you know, I, and I'm going to go ahead and say it now. This, you know, we're going to probably mention some spoilers in this film, but really it doesn't matter because wouldn't you agree that this film is kind of open for interpretation of whatever your own interpretation is of what you see? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I think that's, that, that's one, of, one of the main, uh, you know, what the film is all about, really. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know, I mean, th this is the type of film that you can't really get one time through. You need to really absorb this film, really experience this film, and I think it takes, it's kind of like, like 2001 Space Odyssey, where it's like, it's an experience, and it's not a linear story, and it's something that's going to take several years of you watching, thinking about, experiencing before you can truly understand this film. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, it's it's more of a work of art, per se, than like a linear story. Man, it truly is. It's it's like it's like a painting come to life. I mean, really. Like, like, oh, like, like it's a total work of art or like an artistic display come to life. I mean, it's it's not a film. It is a work of art. You know, and that might be a pretentious thing to say for George Adowski or whatever. I'm not saying I'm fucking butchering his name, but yeah, I mean, it might be a pretentious thing to say in his regard, but it really is like that, man. It's like it's just a work of art come to life. Oh, it is, and it's not like it's not something that you can just take with them on you. I mean, it is like it's it's an experience. You have to like you have to really sit and watch to either get an emoticon what's going on even then it, it's hard to get a first go around like the, the second time even it's like oh, what but it's still so beautifully done where it just you know it, it doesn't matter yeah because like what you know me and crazy talked about you know before we did this review is the set pieces in this movie are just amazing and George Jordan like he he actually helped create a lot of these didn't he or all of them. Yeah. yeah, like he was in with the set design and everything. Like he had his, his fingers in all aspects of the production of this film. And like, I mean... The, He's the alchemist. Yeah, that's right. He is the alchemist, yeah. So he has a, bit, a big part. It's a smaller part in the film, but it's a very big... A smaller role, but a big part in the film. Like uh, what, what the outcome is. And, or, you know, if you can even determine what the outcome is... <laughs> But it's you know the set pieces in this film are something that's going you're gonna you're gonna grasp right out of the gate on this and and just be amazed by like I mean seriously right from the opening scene you're just like wow man this this has an incredible look to it this came out in 1973 and I mean it, it's still it, it's amazing you know that 40 years on that you know you can put this on for the first time watching it like myself. You know, it's just like wow, that is incredible looking, and that and that really is a testament to how much this really is like a work of art. You know? Oh, absolutely! And like the sets are like they're so vast and huge. It's like 
they're like characters themselves. They really are, man. Yeah, because there are a lot of wide shots, big shots, huge rooms, huge sets in this film. I mean, throughout. Oh yeah, like one of my favorite scenes is when they, they all they all the characters gather around this big eyeball, and then it like the camera goes up and you see like them sitting on the outside. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, one other aspect we have to mention of this film is there is a lot of uh, sexual nature to this film, a lot of sexual perversion, wouldn't you say? I mean... <laughs> Extremely. Yeah, and, and like I said, we're going to talk about spoilers because it really doesn't matter when we talk about specific visuals because you're going to get your own interpretation out of this if you watch it, no matter what we say. But, you know, one part that really comes to... There's two parts that come to mind for me right off the bat when I think about this film because I watched this in three settings, and, and it's because I watched it before I went to bed, and I would watch a piece of it, go to bed next night, watch a piece of it, and then I waited like a week and watched the third piece of it. So I saw it in pieces, not all in one setting. But the, the, the two parts that really stand out to me is you know there's one part where they've got this machine and this guy has this huge like I, I don't know what it is I, it's supposed to be like a, a, a dildo I guess it's just like this long tube thing um, basically it looks like one of those things you float on in a pool but it's it's like made out of rubber or whatever and he's like they, they made this big machine and he's trying to give this machine an orgasm <laughs> And he can't make it work. So this woman comes out. And she's like naked. And she takes this thing and starts cramming it into this machine and gives the machine an orgasm. And it like starts shooting out this like brown, looks like diarrhea type liquid shit. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. It, it's so, it's like, what the fuck? But the, the scene that got me the most, that where I'm just like, oh my God, I'm seeing something that is a rarity to see in life and something that you're always going to remember is a scene where there is a temple of testicles like 1,000 testicles kept in this room that's like a temple <laughs> and, and there's like there, there's like one set of testicles left to get and that shows the guy that that donates I guess his his testicles to this temple and they get cut off and they show him, and is it the alchemists that bring it into the te the temple? Yeah. And, and they're bringing it in in this jar, and they're talking about the temples they're bringing in, and they set the testicles in the wall, and, and then there's a big wide shot, and it shows testicles just everywhere. It's like, yeah, I mean, seriously, it's what the fuck, probably what you're saying right now, because that's what it is, man. I, I, I Wow. <laughs> oh, no, man, that seems wild, too. Yeah, it, it's it's just it's a true mind fuck of a film that you know, and, and, and I've got to say, I, I have to also mention this: films like this, it's real hit or miss with me. Like I, I I'm the first one. I'm going to tell you, I'm I'm not a fan of David Lynch type things. I'm just really not. But it doesn't make sense for me to say that because this film is probably even more of a mind fuck than any David Lynch film out there. Wouldn't you say? I mean. Really? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I just, I have to really be in the mood for something like this myself. Like, it, it's, and, and really what's done this for me is, you know, the Lords of Salem, you know, because I, I've heard a lot of references to the George Odowski stuff and, and not seeing the Holy Mountain before and also hearing a lot of good things about it, it you know, I, I was in the mood. It was the perfect moment for me to watch this film. But this isn't something that I could watch all the time, whereas, Crazy, I know you, you really enjoy films like this a lot, correct? I'm a, I'm a huge David Lynch fan. I, I do like the abstract stuff. I mean, I'm not, I, I'm not an expert or the biggest fan, but I do enjoy films like this. I really, because they are like pieces of art, and, you know, I mean, like, you know, I, I appreciate it, but, you, I mean, you know, and this especially, it's like, it's an experience just seeing something like this. It's like, wow. And see, I, I can appreciate them. I mean, I can appreciate it. I can, you know, the, the artistic aspects of it. It just, I, like I said, I just have to be in the mood, you know. Like, I, this isn't something that I would watch all the time. I wouldn't watch films like this all the time. I, I need more of a linear narrative or some type of narrative to go along with it. Like, 
an example once again is the beyond where you know there's an artistic nature to that and there's also open for interpretation moments for that but there is a narrative there lords of salem there is a narrative there even though there's interpretation with this okay yes i've heard you know i've heard somebody say okay once you get towards the end you'll start understanding it more well i didn't <laughs> i mean I, I really didn't see any linear narrative to this whatsoever and maybe there is. I just I, I didn't get it, but also the visuals carried the whole film for me to where it kept my interest throughout. And you know, yes, I didn't watch it all in one setting, but it's just because I'm watching it late at night before I go to bed. I could have watched this all in one setting. And uh, for a film like this, for me personally, that's saying a lot because I don't really watch films like this too often. But I was highly entertained by this film. And I actually do want to go back and re-watch it again and watch it straight through in one viewing, you know. Yeah, that, and that's awesome. Though. Like, that's the way I feel too. It's like seeing it again, like a second time, it's like, this is, it's really weird, but it's, it's so entrancing. Yeah, so have you only seen it twice? Yeah, really. Yeah, and you have this box set also, don't you? Yeah, the same one. Yeah. And I agree that the, the, the visuals carry, but I also, I really love the score too. Yeah. Yeah, the score is awesome. And you know, there's, there's, it, I guess I have to talk about how it, it's, it's, you know, I want to mention how I, I remember there's, there's parts where it's like, I am such and such, and I am over the, what is it, the Saturn territory or something like they that. They represent different planets. Yeah, they represent different planets, and each one has a very different lifestyle. And the one that really stood out to me and I was like whoa that's that's pretty cool shit like a, a very creative idea is the one where um, they they have this this uh, business and the business is um, creating like a last moment for people that have died you remember that where it's like they, they put this thing inside of people that have died and they've got this remote control and it can make people like be in their coffin and like wave to the people. It, oh, uh, yeah. You remember that? It, it's it's like last moment. or I forget the name. They have a name for it. And then they've got this one woman that's got like these big huge tits and she's like moving her tits in her coffin and shit. It's like... It's like they're putting something in a dead person to make them have this last moment of life, you know, through this artificial intelligence or something. It's it's so fucking bizarre, man. <laughs> but it, but it's like, damn, you know, you can see if if people could really do that and pull that off, you can see people doing that, you know. It's yeah, and, and what's funny about that is, you know, just at work the other day, man, I had one of my workers tell me about this website where, you know, it was called Bizarre Funerals, and, and I and I looked at it, and it's so weird, man. It's like the planets aligned for me to see this right after I see this movie because there was this one, and it was showing pictures from this real funeral where they had the guy instead of laying in a coffin, he was like standing up in the corner and shit. They like had him stand in a corner. It was Bizarre Funerals, and then there was this other one where there was this guy they made the coffin like a Cadillac and the whole front of it was like this wheel and it looked like he was holding the wheel to a Cadillac and, and, and instead of laying down in a coffin they had like pipes coming off the Cadillac and an engine and, and it really brought to mind like this it's like man if people could really do this shit they would do it you know <laughs> I think it's creepy as fuck man but I know there's some crazy motherfuckers out there who would totally do this shit <laughs> oh yeah I can see that too man totally in bizarro world yeah but yeah i mean a holy mountain it is a complete mind fuck of a film and you know if you can get you know a good strong narrative out of this film more power to you, you know but one thing i also want to talk about for me personally you know there's there's all kinds of bizarre visuals and everything that really carry this film through and it just it, it's it's continuous and it's one thing after another it pops up that really kept my attention but towards the end, they go into this like self-discovery mission where they go out into the... Is it into the desert, I think? The mountains. Yeah, they go into the mountains, and it's like this self-discovery where they're like overcoming 
um, obstacles in their life and stuff. It kind of lost steam for me there, but it may just be because I'm not watching it all the way through because this was in my third setting in this part. So it didn't really work for me a whole lot there, and I'm thinking it might more on a second time, but it just kind of lost steam for me there. What, what did you think of the ending? I mean, I know you, you, you talked about a certain part of that. Maybe you want to mention it here about the ending of the film. Oh, yeah, I loved it because it, it breaks the fourth wall, and, and I like when, when films do that, and especially something like this. It's just like, it, it, like, it turns on the viewer, and it's like, oh, oh, time to go back to real life now. And that was just like, that to me, it's just like, whoa. And it, know, it kind of blew my mind because it's like, you know, it's like, it's like, it, when it, something breaks the fourth wall like that, it's like talking to somebody directly, and I always found that neat. And for those that are watching this and don't know about the fourth wall, can you explain quickly what exactly that is? Oh yeah, that's that's when like like for example Wayne's World, where they talk to the camera, they talk, the people talk to the audience. That's like breaking the fourth wall, and it's like uh, basically destroying the boundaries between the film and. The audience. the audience, yeah, and, and it totally is, man, because it, it, that's that's I caught that too, and it's like whoa, because they pull back and it's showing the whole camera and the whole crew, and they and they and they have like this, I don't know, it's like some type of star like symbol thing that they they have on the ground, and they pick it up and they just like tip it over and it falls over, and then that's the end of the film, and yeah, it, it's really crazy though, yeah, there at the end, the very yeah, end, I really should say. Like, just like whoa! After all that came before, it's like, oh well, go back to reality you now. After that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, crazy. What would you give Holy Mountain one, one out of ten scale? Uh, I, I'd say a seven. Seven. Just as an artistic value alone. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I agree with that. I would probably give it a seven out of ten too. You know, I mean, like like I said, I, I usually prefer something that's got. A little bit more of a, of a linear narrative going on to it, um, but I appreciate the visuals in this film. I appreciate the artistic qualities of this film because you don't see films like this very much. I mean, you know, th this is just an amazing period of time of film. You know, you know, you think, uh, you know, uh, 2001: Space Odyssey came like what four or five years before this, and you got this. There's just a lot of films that came out of this era, man, where there was really no rules of film, and people were really trying to push films in new areas, man. And it's like some of this stuff just hasn't been surpassed from artistic levels and stuff, man. It's just, it's now. yeah, it's really amazing. Like I, I, I really appreciate this film a lot, and it's really made me appreciate uh, Jordowski way more than what I did previously. And now it makes me want to go back, even though I've had this box set forever, and not went back not watched all these films like it makes me want to go back and and, re, and watch the other two films that's in this set but also El Topo once again because I've only seen that one time but yeah these are he just makes type of and, and actually uh, the uh, I know I'm saying it wrong but Santa Sam Gree he made that also and I, I actually have that and I've never watched it which I've heard that's I've heard many people mention that they think that that's his best film too Oh, I have that one too. I've never seen it. Yeah, I've heard it's just amazing, but I've never seen it. So, you know, watching this, you know, even though it's usually not my type of film, it's made me appreciate him more. It's made me want to go back and watch things more. So I guess, you know, it's served its purpose with me. <laughs> well, we should also mention, though, like, stuff like this, it's it, not to sound pretentious either, but it's really an acquired taste. Oh, man, without a doubt. I mean, without a doubt. Like, it's... I mean, you have to really go into a film like this with an open mind, and you have to really just, you can't have any um, preconceived thoughts going into a film like this. You just have to understand that it's going to be a mind fuck. It's going to be the type of film where you are not going to understand everything that's going on. You're not going to really be able to make out a linear beginning to end story with this. But you have, you know, if you if you want to get past that and want to keep going, just give the film a chance. Um, because yeah, man, I mean, yeah, I totally agree. You have to you have to really go into something like this open minded, especially if you're not used to films like this. No, I mean, yeah, yeah, man. It's just like you know, just just turn off and just enjoy the experience of it. Yeah, because it is a total like experience movie. It's not. 
you know, it, it's it's not a regular movie. It's an experience. It, it, you're right. It's an experience film. <laughs> just don't go expecting like an A to Z story. Just go expecting yeah. like something just different and fun. Yeah. So yeah, guys, that is it. Um, that is the Holy Mountain. So you know, if that sounds like something you want to watch, check it out, guys. Crazy. Yeah. I, I appreciate you joining me once again, man. It's been a great time. It's been awesome. Yep. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Later.